Hi, my name is Kevin Wolomowski. I'm a senior outbound product manager in the Telecom Media and Technology Group at ServiceNow. And today I'd like to take you through an overview and a demo of the telecommunications network inventory product. Today's presentation may contain some forward-looking statements and may show some features that are future planning. Uh, if that's the case, we uh, strongly uh, suggest that any purchase decisions on this product be made based on what is currently available in, in the product. So ServiceNow worked with AT&T to co-develop the network inventory product. Um, and as John Summers, the Senior Vice President of uh, Information Technology and the CIO at uh, AT&T says, uh, working with ServiceNow to develop the network inventory product was a great collaboration to create a tool that could help us address an industry-wide challenge. So what we're hearing from our customers today is that uh, there's unprecedented demand for digital-first customized services, and this is primarily driven by 5G. Uh, we're hearing that there are a lot of archaic systems and labor-intensive processes that are still out there, and that's inhibiting uh, the ability to automate um, across the life cycle, as well as uh, limit the ability to invest uh, in optimization. There are out-of-sync inventory systems, and that leads to inaccurate and untrusted data. Uh, and finally, we're also hearing that uh, the disconnects between the resources and services leads to slow and frustrating delivery and uh, unhappy customers. So with new technologies, partners, and complex business strategies, CSP's operations are becoming increasingly more disjointed and complex to manage. Operational processes span organizational silos and demand visibility into data distributed across multiple organizational teams, partners, and systems. In addition to the multitude of people and organizations involved, a fragmented systems landscape and distributed data ownership vastly complicate processes to launch and deliver new services, support customers, and assure networks and services. Let's look at an example of a typical customer support process involving a trouble ticket. Customer support teams must interact with the technical support teams across multiple systems with limited to no visibility into the network, which is challenging to resolve customer issues. On the other hand, technical support teams can only connect the network with the customer after costly and error-prone integrations that are difficult to deploy and maintain. These complexities introduce inefficiencies across teams and systems that directly and indirectly increase the cost to operate and support customers. CSAT scores are directly impacted due to delays in resolving issues and the lack of visibility and transparency into key customer data. CSPs must respond to rapidly changing market demands to launch, deliver, operate, and support new services, build new processes, or update existing processes on top of already complex legacy systems. Keeping up with ongoing customer demands adds another layer of complexity to updating or maintaining their current operations that cause a cyclical effect of reducing efficiencies and increasing costs. With ServiceNow, CSPs are transforming the way they operate by streamlining task assignments, providing data visibility across organizations, eliminating costly and error-prone integrations, and enabling technical teams to adapt to rapidly changing market conditions. By centralizing network and service topology in the CMDB, both customer service agents and network operators can access consistent, relevant, and updated network data. With both organizations working on the same platform, visibility to relevant data and execution of cross-organizational processes becomes seamless. Money typically spent on costly deployment and maintenance to integrate systems can instead be spent on streamlining operations to deliver exceptional customer experiences. With product, service, and resource data residing on the same platform as product inventory and the CMDB, attending to customer requests and issues is no longer a time-consuming multi-system process. When market conditions change, ServiceNow's no low-code and workflow automation capabilities enable the business to initiate and execute sophisticated process changes without costly time-consuming multi-development lifecycle processes. For example, if a newly launched premium service requires an additional layer of agents, ServiceNow administrators can easily add an additional workflow step and have the change take effect immediately. The results become apparent in rising CSAT and NPS metrics. 
So taking a look at the telco products from ServiceNow in this diagram, uh, let's focus on starting from the left, network inventory. So network inventory is the product where we would be doing the planning and the building of your network. Once that planning and building is done, the next stage would be to dispatch field uh, technicians to the right sites with the right equipment and the right skills to get that equipment installed and up and running. The next one would be order management. So now that you've got the, the network built out, now you're ready to start receiving orders for customers. So order management allows you to capture the orders from the customers and decompose those into the products and the services and the resources supporting those orders. On day two, once the service is up and running, now you're managing that service and you're managing the customer and the services that they're provisioned and the network that's supporting them. All of those are being managed through our telco service management product. And then from a service assurance standpoint, our service operations management module allows you to correlate incidents and alarms with the services that are being supported and the resources supporting those services. The telecom network inventory capabilities. So if we take a look at this diagram, this will give us a better idea of what exactly telecom network inventory is and perhaps what it isn't. So starting at the bottom, there's different domains that get supported by this network inventory product. Uh, you'll see mobile, wireline, core. All of these domains are supported. Any domain, per, uh, any domain is actually supported by the, uh, the TNI data model. Uh, that's because the TNI data model is built on the CMDB. The CMDB has classes that were introduced for specific technology and equipment types that can be leveraged by the telecom network inventory product. So the types of inventory that we keep in TNI, if we take a look at the second layer of this diagram, let's start with physical and the virtual inventory. So physical would be your, your actual physical equipment, your cards, uh, your, your patch panels, connecting devices together. That's your physical inventory. Your logical inventory would be more of your representation of an end-to-end -end, uh, service uh, or circuit path. So going through multiple different sites, multiple pieces of equipment. That kind of inventory is obviously captured as part of TNI, as well as the virtual inventory and the service inventory. So virtual inventory might be uh, virtualized network functions. So you could have virtual routers, virtual firewalls. That virtual inventory is also stored in the CMDB and leveraged by TNI. And then the services that you provide to your customers that get provisioned over your network, that service inventory is maintained in TNI as well. Equipment templates are used, uh, and equipment templates are in, used in conjunction with inventory templates, uh, or inventory models, I should say. And inventory models extend from the hardware model. So we use a combination of models to represent equipment, and then templates to represent the instantiation of the actual equipment at a network site. And those templates reference the models. From a circuit design and assign standpoint, that's native capability that comes with he and I. So we have out of the box workflows that you can leverage right away uh, to start creating circuits, both physical and logical connections. Uh, we've got the ability to have path computation uh, as well as some additional design and assign capabilities that will be coming in the future. So essentially being able to build out a circuit from one site to another and then uh, compute the appropriate path to get there through your network. Rack space management, uh, we have the, uh, in, a, in a release coming up soon, this will be our Washington release, um, which is as of this recording scheduled to release in one month uh, in February of 2024. And that release will include some updated visualizations, including the ability to visualize both the front and back of equipment racks. Uh, planning and capacity management is is a key part of the of the platform. So the ability uh, initially to to calculate um, slot availability, how many slots do I have occupied, how many are available, how many cards are in those, how many ports are available on those cards. That kind of planning and capacity management is natively part of the uh, TNI application. 
Asset management. So TNI comes as part of actually TNI is uh, includes hardware asset management. Um, so TNI is built on the hardware asset management platform, and as such, um, TNI leverages the workflows for Ham. Uh, so that allows your engineers who are doing the planning and building to issue uh, requisitions that will be fed into the hardware asset management workspace where those agents can then apply the ham workflows for procurement, uh, for shipping, for ordering, for receiving, for operationalizing and creating the assets in a, in a storeroom. All of those are going to be capable using the hardware asset management workflows that are included with TNI. Uh, there's the number management capability, so the ability out of the box to, to manage ranges and assignments of lag numbers, VLAN assignments, as well as IP address management and telephone number management. In an upcoming release, we will be supporting um, power, floor space, and cooling management, so uh, environmental KPIs will be part of the TNI data model. And then everything that we do in TNI leverages the platform construct of change management. So uh, anything from creating new equipment to um, creating new connections in your network, all of those are done leveraging the change management model. So we have change flows that we include out of the box that will uh, allow you to have workflows to operationalize uh, a lot of these motions. And then all of it is wrapped up in our network inventory workspace, which is a configurable and customizable user interface uh, for the users of network inventory. So right now, what I'd like to do is spend just a few minutes talking about the CMDB and specifically the classes that support the TNI uh, product. And then once we uh, go through this, we'll take a look at a network diagram example, and then we'll go into TNI and we'll see how we can compare that network diagram to the classes that we're looking at uh, when we do the demo. So when TNI was uh, was introduced, uh, we also introduced several new classes to the CMDB, and TNI uses the CMDB. TNI is not a separate database from the CMDB. Instead, it does leverage the directly the CMDB and the classes in the CMDB. So in this diagram, the, the classes that are showing in yellow are ones that were added uh, when we introduced network inventory. And that concept starts with uh, this concept of site. So we introduced a class for site in the CMDB, and from that, we extended this network site. And the reason we did that is because there were no classes in the CMDB associated with a network site. We do have location that is used, but the location belongs to a table that lives outside of the CMDB. And the reason we wanted a class for sites in the CMDB is because network sites have an operational status. So when you have a CI, that has an operational status. So network sites will have an operational status by virtue of the equipment that's located in those sites. So now you've got your network sites. Your network sites are used to represent all of the different places on your network where you have equipment operating and managed. Uh, those can be central offices. Those can be customer sites. If you've got um, services you're providing to your customers, you might have their uh, locations uh, modeled as a, a network site in your CMDB. So the way the hierarchy works is the concept of a network site is the foundation. Once you have your network sites defined, now you can start creating the equipment that occupies those sites. And to do that, we leverage several different classes that we introduced in the CMDB. We have this equipment holder class, and that is used in this case to represent the things that hold equipment. So things like racks, equipment racks, um, which are extremely common in, uh, in network operations. So you'll have equipment racks, you could have cabinets uh, that are equipment holders, you could have a shelf that's an equipment holder that gets mounted in a rack. Uh, as well as slots and subslots. So chassis have slots that hold um, interface cards, and those slots are modeled as equipment holders as well. We introduced this class called Telco, uh, telco Equipment, and the Telco Equipment class uh, has a number of classes that extend from that that are discrete classes associated with very specific equipment types or technologies. I'll show you a slide that gives uh, some of those classes so you can get an idea of the granularity that we that we go down to in the CMDB for network inventory. 
but those uh, those devices typically get mounted in an equipment rack. So there is a relationship, a contains contained by between telco equipment or these classes and the equipment holder. Uh, once you've got your equipment related to the rack that it's in, now you can create slots on that equipment to represent the slots uh, where cards will be installed. Once those slots are created and represented on that equipment, now you can have your interface cards defined that will be related to the slots on those devices. Um, not all devices have slots and cards. Some, uh, some are, have just ports directly on the equipment. So this network interface class, which we use to represent um, equipment ports, can have relationships to uh, an interface card where you have a card with ports on it, or you could have ports directly on the device itself, say if, uh, if it's a router. So these classes are used in conjunction with each other to create any type of equipment for any type of technology in your network. And so now that you've got your equipment represented at your network sites, now what you want to do is create the relationships between them uh, to connect out your network and actually create your network. And that's done by a combination of these two classes, the physical connection class and the logical connection class. Physical connections are used to represent the discrete point-to-point -point connections between two devices. So be perhaps a connection between a, a switch port and a patch panel. Uh, that would be an example of a physical connection. And so you'll have a lot of physical connections in your network. Um, these are, again, these discrete point-to-point -point connections. The next class that we have is the logical connection class. And logical connections are used to represent that complete end-to-end -end circuit design. So logical connections usually consume physical connections. So when you create these physical connections, you will then create a logical connection which consists of a series of physical connections. Logical connections can also consume other logical connections. So these can be part of each other. So in fact, in the, in the demo that I'm going to give you, I will show you how circuits are created by consuming physical connections and then a hierarchy of circuits are created on top of that by logical connections being built on top of each other. So with that, let's take a look at um, some of those additional out-of-the-box supported classes that we introduced um, that dis uh, descend from the telco equipment class. So this gives you an idea. These are both wireline and wireless related classes. You've got fiber broadband. Uh, some of these classes are for passive devices. Some of them are for active devices. Uh, so there is a multitude of classes that were introduced to support a multitude of equipment and technology types. And then again, um, the CMDB is, is configurable such that if you have equipment that a class doesn't exist for, you can create a new class and add that to the model as well. So now what I'd like to do is take a look at an, a, a fairly simple, um, this is a gigabit PON network diagram. So this is an example of a GPON network. And I'm gonna go through this diagram. We'll talk about how this relates to the CMDB classes that we just discussed. And then I'm going to go into the, uh, the TNI product, and then we'll take a look at how this is represented in the product. So if we consider that our inventory model is hierarchical and it starts with the concept of network sites, you'll see across the bottom here, we've got four different network sites. We've got a central office. We've got a PFP location where there's a splitter. We got a fiber services terminal location. And at the very end here, we have a customer site. All of these are going to be representations of a network site. Now in the network site, we'll go out to our central office here. We can see in this case, we've got a number of pieces of equipment that are defined uh, as, as being occupied at this network site. So I've got an ethernet switch, I've got an optical line terminal, and then I have uh, four different fiber distribution panels that are being used to kind of capture these connections from the switch through several different fiber panels to the optical line terminal. So if we go into TNI and we take a look at one of these devices, we can kind of see the classes that were used to represent it. So 
So now I'm in the telecom network inventory uh, workspace. So if we go take a look at our Dallas central office, I will pull up this form and I can see that I've got all of the information associated with this particular network site, the name, the location that it's associated with, um, the statuses, NPA, NXX, phone numbers, all of the different types of information, operational notes, comment sections, um, just all the key information that you would have for a network site. Uh, if I had child sites associated with this network site, they would be showing up in this tab. Uh, this particular site, I do not have any child sites defined. Um, but I do have equipment at this site, so if I click on this equipment tab, this will give me a list of all of the devices that are currently um, located at this Dallas, Texas central office. So here's my ESS 7450. Let's drill into this piece of equipment and see what this is uh, all about. So here's my overview page. I can get a quick look at how this equipment is configured, how many slots it has, how many cards it has, uh, and then how many ports are on this device. And then it'll give me the availability of these as well. Uh, I can drill into this. I can see that this equipment shelf has two slots. This slot appears to have a card in it. So this is the card that's occupying that slot. And if I drill into that, I can see these are the ports that are associated with that card. Additional detail tab, I can pull in here. I can see the firmware, uh, manufacturer, model number, etc. cetera. Um, this equipment was created uh, referencing the product model for the Nokia 7450. I can see that here. Um, I've got serial number access here as well. Uh, the next thing I want to look at are my physical connections. So these are going to be the physical connections that are uh, either originating or terminating on this particular piece of equipment. So I can see that I've got four physical connections that are um, that are attached to this particular ESS 7450. So if I go back to my network diagram, I will see the 7450 has four different physical connections. So each of those physical connections is connecting a port from that 7450 to a position on this fiber distribution panel. All right. Now what I want to take a look at are the logical connections that are coming in and out of this. So I can see that I've got three logical connections. I've got two different 10 gigabit Ethernet paths, and then I've got one 20 gig lag path. So let's go back to our diagram and take a look at where those come in. So as I go up the hierarchy of the network here, you can see I've got different layers. And so the, what I want to take a look at here is these two circuits. So these are two Ethernet bearer paths. They're 10 gigabit paths, each of them. And the way that they're constructed is they contain connection elements which consist of physical connections. So each of these, each of these Ethernet bearer paths has two connection elements. The first is a connection from the 7450 to a fiber panel. And the second is a connection from the OLT to the fiber panel. So each of these gigabit Ethernet bearer paths contain two uh, physical connections to make that circuit up. So if we go back into, uh, we can take a look at one of these gigabit Ethernet paths. We'll take a look at uh, path 102. I can see that this is um, at the same site. Uh, a and Z site are the same. So this is a circuit that is uh, in the same network site. The port assignments for that equipment on there, I can see that. Um, more importantly, if I go click on my connection elements, this connection elements tab essentially is the equivalent of a CLR, uh, a circuit layout record. So it'll give you all of the design components that make up this circuit and then the order in which these components are sequenced. So in this case, sequence one is a physical connection from the 7450 to a fiber distribution panel. And sequence two is a physical connection from a fiber distribution panel to the optical line terminal. 
if we go back, we'll see both of these both of these circuits are designed exactly the same. So if I go take a look at path 101, it's going to have two connection elements, and those connection elements are going to be the connection elements down here. Um, again, from a, a port on the 7450 to a fiber panel, and then from a fiber panel to the optical line terminal. Now, each of these gigabit Ethernet paths gets consumed by this logical connection path, and this is the lag path. So this is a link aggregation group. And so when we create these logical connection bearer paths, these get consumed into one 20 gigabit um, link aggregation path. So if we go back into TNI and take a look at our lag path that's coming out of this ESS7450, I can drill into that and I can see that this the connection elements here for this lag path are two logical connections and they are indeed both of the Ethernet bearer paths. So that's going to create the top level connection logical connection in this network design. Now the to get it out to the customer site, there's also going to be a logical connection path between our, our central office and the fiber splitter location, and that's going to be a pond network path. And this is going to be put together pretty much the same way these bearer paths were. This pond network path is going to consist of two connection elements, and it's going to be the physical connections that take it out of the OLT, as well as the physical connection that can that connects the splitter to the central office. So those two physical connections together are what's going to constitute this fiber, uh, this PON network path. Now there's also going to be a PON access path that gets created, and this is going to um, provide the circuit capability from that fiber splitter location all the way to the customer site. And this may actually be built as part of the workflow where a, uh, a technician has a task assigned to them where they actually have to go out to this location and physically jumper uh, this connection together. Um, but anyway, all of these all of these paths would be would be built and part of the infrastructure that gets that is in place to support a customer service that would get ordered and provisioned over the top of this. So if I take a look at the very top here, this is an example of an SD-WAN that a customer has ordered, and this service would get provisioned over this GPON network. So if I go take a look at this, at this circuit, you will see that this circuit is going to have connection elements. It's going to have the first connection element is going to be uh, capacity off of that um, logical connection lag path. The next is going to be, it's going to pull capacity off this logical connection PON network path. So now that's going to get that service from the central office, at least out to the splitter location, where it can then connect to this PON access path that's going to provide it the ability to get to the customer location. And then finally, the last connection element or the last design component of the service is going to be where the technician is actually going to create a physical connection between the optical network terminal at the customer location and their router. So now if we go into um, network inventory to see what this circuit looks like, I have saved that so I can pull that up right away. So here's that SD-WAN service that got provisioned over the top. I can go take a look at my connection elements and I can see that I've got network interfaces at the A and the Z side. And then to get from the A to the Z side, I'm grabbing capacity off that PON lag path. And then the PON network path. And then the PON access path. And then finally, that physical connection at the customer site that's connecting that ONT to their gateway. I also have the ability to, to visualize this as well. Uh, so I can go into my network diagram and see here's my logical connection. I can drill into this to see what this logical connection is comprised of. And I can see indeed that this logical connection has other logical connections that it consumes. So going back to the start here, I can click on this and see these are my ethernet bearer paths that get consumed into that one logical lag path. I can see my PON uh, network path. And if I drill into that, I can see what that's consisting of. So I can see that that's a physical connection 
and another physical connection. And then the PON access path, I can drill into that as well and see how I'm connected from the fiber splitter location uh, to the fiber services terminal. And then eventually all the way out to the customer location. So that is an overview of the telecom network inventory product. Uh, there are other features and functionalities that I will record separate videos on, but today I just wanted to give an overview of the, the key features and functionality uh, for modeling your equipment and your network. Thank you very much for watching.